everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. We start off with Anthony Alfredo, who was at Texas Motor Speedway for his final start of the year in the NASCAR Xfinity Series in his number 21 RCR Maestro's Classic Chevrolet. Anthony started 18th and quickly made his run to the front. Let's get a race recap directly from Anthony. Oh, about to board the plane here in Texas, but sorry I didn't get the post-race video to you all sooner. Had a bunch of media because we got our first top three tonight, so I'm super pumped about that. Very thankful for Maestro's Classic coming on board for my final start of 2020. It's been an honor to be a part of the Richard Childress Racing family and hopefully for a long time in the long-term future, uh, but it's also been a privilege to drive these cars, and I hope I made everyone proud, which is not only all my partners and all the incredible people that supported me and allowed us to get to the racetrack this year, but my friends, my family, all the Sauce Mafia who supports me. It was really cool to have a shot at the win tonight. We were second running down the leader at the end and uh, just kind of fell off there a little bit. We probably finished a little bit better than we thought we would. Um, so I'm proud of that. It goes it says a lot about our number 21 team because there's no quit in anyone on the, in this group and very thankful for the effort they put in week in and week out. It was really cool to score my best career finish and best finish for the 21 car this season in my final start. Although I am a little disappointed because I wish it was a win. This year has been incredible, but that's a video for another time. I'll talk about this whole season and a recap um, later this week. But for now, uh, regarding tonight, great night. Kept ourselves in position all night, even when we weren't the best car. We stayed in the top three, top five, and um, just made smart decisions and were patient and let the race come to us. And sure enough, we finished in the top three. So very, very proud of that, like I said before, and so thankful for everyone who supports me. Uh, definitely an awesome day, a humbling day. Sad that the year is over but it's cool to go out on a high positive note and looking forward to uh, recapping the season for you all later this week. But it's been a blessing to compete at this level. It's something I've dreamed of. This is my passion and I really hope I get to run full time next season so I could go compete for a championship. Thank you guys. What a wild week from being on his lid at Kansas to a third at Texas. In my opinion, he is the most marketable driver in all of NASCAR. My only question is, sponsors, what are you waiting for? Jesse Love competed in two Arkham Menard Series West events over the weekend. He started at All-American Speedway in Roseville, California, where he qualified the number 19 Napa Power Premium Plus Toyota in seventh. The one-third mile saw plenty of side-by-side -side racing, but passing came as a premium. Midway through the race, Jesse started to experience some gremlins that affected the horsepower, but managed to hold on to a top five coming home in fourth. On Sunday, the Arkham Menard Series made its way to Kern County Raceway Park for the Enos 125. Jesse won the pole and led the first 30 laps, but from that point, Jesse started to have some brake issues and would eventually lose his brakes due to a bad master cylinder, but still managed to bring home an eighth place finish. Jesse maintains his points lead, heading to Phoenix for the final race of the season on November 7th. Connor Mozak competed in the Cars Tour finale at Greenville Pick and Speedway on Sunday in his number 88 Junior Motorsports Chevrolet. Connor qualified 21st on Saturday, finished fifth in his heat race, and brought home a 10th place finish in Sunday's feature. Connor also secured the 2020 Cars Tour Rookie of the Year title. Connor finished his rookie season with eight top tens in 12 starts. Congratulations, Connor. Caden Honeycutt made his second start of the year in the number two Donnie Wilson's racing entry at Five Flags Speedway for the 150 lap Blizzard Series that had a stacked field, including NASCAR champion Kyle Busch. However, rain pushed the race to Sunday and Kyle was unable to run. Caden was second fastest in practice and qualified his friends of Jacqueline Ford in the ninth position, but he started on the pole after the redraw. The 17-year-old led the field for the first 38 laps, battling the likes of Steven Nassi and Bubba Pollard and never was outside the top five, eventually finishing in third. Great run, Caden. Up next for Caden, in the super late model, the 2020 Snowball Derby at Five Flags, December 2nd 
through the 6th. Grant Thompson was also at Five Flag Speedway for championship night in the Allen Turner Hyundai Pro Late Model Series. Grant qualified second, only 18 one hundredths of a second off the pole. Grant ran in the top 10 for 92 of the 100 laps, battling a tight condition the entire race. The young Mobile, Alabama driver brought home a seventh place finish and finished second in the points championship, only four points from winning his third championship of the year. Up next for Grant, Tucson Speedway for the junior late model turkey shoot on November 27th and 28th. Joe Valento returned to his favorite track at Dells Raceway Park for the Midwest Truck Series final race of the year in his number 30 Arden Mills Nitro Lubricant Chevrolet. Let's get a race recap from Joe. Hey guys, Joe Valento here back from Dells Raceway Park with my weekend recap. So our weekend started out good. In practice, we only had one round and we were in the top three. Then, for qualifying, we qualified on the pole and broke my track record from last year. So that means the invert was up to me. The invert for the Midwest Truck Series is 5 plus the roll of the dice. Well, I rolled a 5, so that means we started 10th. On the initial start of the race, my outside lane just wasn't moving. We fell back to about 13th and had to work our way up from there. We had a really fast truck and we were able to work our way up to finish 3rd. Overall, really great season and a solid night of racing. We ended up third in the championship. Can't thank the KBR performance guys enough for all the hard work and time that they put into the truck all year long. Also can't thank Nitro Lubricants, Ardent Mills, Napa Auto Parts, the Friends of Jackham Foundation, and Race Race Brand Development for their continued support. Let's take a look at the final numbers for Joe. He finished third in the championship in points with two wins six top fives, and never finished out of the top 10 in nine starts. Great year, Joe. Can't wait to see what's in store for you for 2021. Let's now go out west to California, where we find Joey East, who was a busy young man, competing in three different races in two days at Kern County Raceway Park. Starting off in the Pro Late model, where he qualified second, had to start eighth with the invert and raced his way to a second place finish. On Sunday, Joey took the track for the Arkham Menard Series West race, where he qualified 12th, had a tire go down early, could not get off the track to the pits, so he had to stop on the track, but he was penalized five laps for bringing out the yellow. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Joey eventually finishing in the 13th position. Joey jumped from the ARCA car to the SRL Super Late Model, where he qualified 15th out of 25 cars, raced mid-pack for most of the race, and finished in 16th. Up next for Joey, ARCA Menard Series at Phoenix Raceway on November the 7th. Cassidy Hines had a great weekend of racing in her Nate Clower prepared number 88 Friends of Jacqueline Ford Pro Late Model at Kern County Raceway Park. Cassidy competed in dual 60 lap features and she did not disappoint, bringing home a fifth place finish on Saturday and a fourth place finish on Sunday. Up next for Cassidy, Junior Late Models at Tucson Speedway's Turkey Shoot on November 27th and 28th. Gavin Graham was back in his legend car on Saturday at Auburndale Speedway in Winter Haven, Florida. Gavin finished second in his heat race, had to start fourth for the feature, but raced his way to the lead using the outside lane, taking advantage of the PJ1 that was sprayed on the track. On a late race restart, Gavin was hit from behind, suffered some damage, but was still able to drive his double zero to victory lane. Keep an eye on this young man for the rest of the year and 2021. Up next for Gavin, Pro Trucks, Auburndale Speedway on October the 31st. I would like to introduce you to our newest race face driver. His name is Carter Whalen. He's 11 year old quarter midget driver from Georgia. You're gonna be hearing a lot from this young man over the next few weeks. 
Well, that's it for this week's Race Face Driver updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel from your favorite race face drivers. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your community. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham, thanks for watching.